Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. We're gonna to try to answer the question in this week's video, should you spend your money on a high-end Squire or a low-end Fender? Let's check out the instruments we're gonna use for today's video. Now, firstly, we've got the Squire Deluxe. And the Deluxe, along with the Classic Vibe, kind of occupy the highest end of the Squire lineup, um, but the two guitars are polar opposite. The Classic Vibe is purely vintage inspired, um, from the hardware to the tones to the look, um, everything, and the Squire Deluxe is a modern take on a Strat. So, very different. I did a comparison between like a Squire Bullet, a Squire Affinity, and the Classic Vibe. Uh, it was a while ago, but I'll link to it if you uh, want to hear what that sounds like. Um, but for today's video, because we're going to compare it to a Fender, um, we're going to use the modern version of the Squire. The second guitar we're going to use in today's comparison is this Made in Mexico Standard, um, and this represents the lowest end of Fender's lineup. Now this Mexican Standard is probably the most battle-worn guitar on the channel. Uh, I've used it on a ton of different comparisons, uh, Squire Standard, American Standard, uh, GNL, probably some other ones as well, um, but pretty much everywhere it goes, you guys just love the way this guitar sounds. It's got really high output, warm pickups that I think a lot of people like, um, including myself, I think it sounds great, but it'll be interesting when we kind of up the ante and bring in a higher end Squire. So as per usual, we're gonna do a full riff by riff, position by position sound comparison, as well as some soloing, and then we'll wrap things up with a final comparison and some pluses and minuses of each model. And in the meantime, let's quickly burn through some specs. So what exactly do you get when you buy a Squire Deluxe? Well, first of all, it's made in Indonesia and based around a modern Strat, as I mentioned before, um, but there's probably two or three features that really set this model apart from all other Squires, um, and in my opinion, make it the best buy in the Squire range. First of all is the neck. This thing is so comfortable. It's got an unfinished neck, um, so sliding back and forth is just great to play on. Um, in my opinion, much better than the Classic Vibe, um, which has a really thin neck and a really high gloss sticky finish, um, which is perfect for a vintage correct instrument, right? And it has its place in the lineup, um, uh, kind of opposite of the Deluxe, but for um, you know a modern playing Strat, and for most people, I think this would be the better choice. It's got a great neck, um, best in its price range. Next up, it's got a modern two-point trim that actually works. So if you like using your trim, even just adding a little bit of flutter or vibrato, um, this is one that you can make work. And thirdly, it's got Duncan Design pickups, which is an upcharge um, using Seymour Duncan's designs, but wound overseas. Now we can't just focus on the positives, we gotta give you guys some negatives on this instrument so that you have a full picture. Um, and negative number one is the tuning machines. Now I would have loved to see something a little bit more robust on a high-end Squire. Um, now, if you're used to playing on a bullet and you pick one up, you might be like, they're not that bad, you know, they, they're decent. Uh, but when we're comparing it to a low-end Fender, it's definitely a weakness. We'll get to that in a second. Um, and that's really my only gripe with this instrument. It's an awesome guitar. It's got the full 22 frets, like a modern Strat. Um, and I guess the only other half negative, which is really subjective, um, is the basswood body. I don't really love basswood, and maybe it's just because, you know, I've played Alder on Strats and Tellys for like 20 years. Um, but I do have uh, three instruments in the studio uh, at the moment that all have basswood and they all feel the same way to play. And it's just the way it absorbs, um, you know, the energy of the strings. It, it does something different than Alder and it just feels different to play on. So now we move on to the Fender Mexican Standard. So what exactly is a standard? Is it modern? Is it vintage? Well, the answer is it's both. It's sort of this mishmash of vintage and modern features. And the cynic inside of me says, well, the only reason it doesn't have full modern specs is because they're holding back features uh, from the American line so that the, the Mexican line doesn't cannibalize sales. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's certainly uh, my perception and a little bit of a shame. 
Um, so yeah, you have vintage features like the six uh, screw trim and 21 frets. Um, obviously the Squire has the two point trim and 22 frets, which are more modern. Um, but then this guitar has really high output modern pickups and modern tuning machines. So yeah, it's, it's a little bit of an interesting combination. Um, other than that, uh, both guitars are very similar. Five way switches, uh, one volume that controls all pickups and two tones. Unfortunately, neither tone um, affects the bridge pickup on either guitar. Now that's a quick and easy mod to fix, um, but it's kind of a shame they don't come from the factory that way. All right, let's get on to the fun stuff. Let's do our playing comparison. So we're gonna do five different riffs in each one of the pickup positions. Now I have my personal preferences uh, for which guitar I like in which position. I'm not gonna say that till the end uh, so that you guys can just enjoy. Um, we're gonna be using the Blue Angel amp mic'd up with the Sennheiser E906 mic as per usual. Um, other than that, let's take a listen to the riff comparison. So after listening to those riffs back to back, a couple things became very apparent. First of all, the Mexican standard definitely earns its reputation as being one of the warmest strats ever made. Um, it doesn't matter what I've compared it to, whether it's American, whether it's uh, other squires, um, it's always the warmest, roundest tone. So if you like that kind of sound, or you've tried a, a Strat or Tele and you're like, well, they're too cutting, they're too bright, they're too brittle, I can't get a good round tone, try one of these, um, that's gonna be your best bet, especially if you like the looks and the feel of a Strat, but you never really like the tone. The second thing is the output on the Fender is much, much higher. So in the computer program, I kind of equalized the volume so that you guys could hear, you know, a true representation of the tone. Um, but sometimes the Squire does sound louder because it's got more high end. So that gives us, you know, the perception of volume. Um, but in actuality, you could hear the, the Fender peaking sometimes uh, when the Squire didn't. Um, and when we used overdrive too, you could hear it driving the amp a little bit harder. So yeah, those are the two main things uh, that I noticed after listening to those riffs.
Now, my main takeaway after listening to both of these guitars in a mix is that they sound remarkably similar. You know, when I start adding, you know, the tones that I like to use, uh, the EQs, the delays, the reverbs, um, and then play them the same, obviously, because I'm the same person, and so my phrasing and stuff is, is very similar. Um, the two guitars sound remarkably similar in a mix. So, uh, a little bit different in terms of sustain and overdrive, um, but overall, you know, those are really subtleties, and I think playing both of them in a mix, um, yeah, they both sounded good. They both sounded like strats, and uh, both very, very usable tones. So some final thoughts as we wrap up this comparison. Uh, first of all, let's talk about playability because I always get asked uh, about that, especially when I include Squires. Um, this thing's awesome. Yeah, the fret works great. Uh, the actions, you know, you can set it up exactly the same. Um, no, no problems at all with playability on either of them. These are great guitars. Um, secondly is the weight. The basswood is actually quite a bit lighter. So if you like a light strat, that might be, you know, a plus in the column of, you know, the Squire. Um, the Alder one here is quite a bit heavier, probably by like a pound and a half, actually. It's quite a bit. Um, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Um, and again, pluses for the Squire are 22 frets. Um, I like the Duncan Design pickups. They're not the best in the world, but I think they're pretty good. Um, the two-point trim is a huge plus for me because I actually use it. Um, yeah, and other than that, I love the looks of this, the Daphne blue. I think it comes in a vintage white as well. Um, so yeah, really cool, uh, great looking, great sounding. Uh, I didn't talk about the saddles actually. The, the saddles on this are modern block saddles too. So if you like to rest your hand on there and palm mute, um, that's a plus. And on, uh, yeah, the Mexican, you have the vintage bent steel saddles. So that might be a plus for somebody else if you like that look. Um, yeah, and other than that, it's just true to form. It's a high output, more modern sounding, uh, fatter, rounder sounding guitar, better hardware, like better tuning machines. Um, the nuts on both of them are just fine. Like the, the Squire Deluxe, when I first got it, pinged a lot because it's just a cheap plastic nut. Um, but once you get like, you know, 10 or 20 hours of just playing hard with a bunch of bands, it just wore itself in and now it doesn't ping anymore, especially using the tram, no problems at all. So even though it is a cheap nut, um, I haven't had any problems with it once I really, you know, wore it in. So what are my final thoughts? Which ones should you guys buy? Well, obviously it's gonna depend which feature set is most important to you, but I think in a general sense, uh, for me, if I was buying new, I would buy the Squire Deluxe. It's a ton of guitar for the money. Um, I like the way it looks, I like the way it sounds, I like the way it feels to play on, especially with that neck, that thing's just killer. Um, and if I, was going, if I was buying used, I think I would buy the Made in Mexico one. Um, so again, it's just gonna depend on which uh, features are most important to you, but that would be my general recommendations. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this comparison. Uh, let me know in the comments below which guitar you guys favored. I think this one was a lot closer, uh, you know, than a lot of comparisons I've done, which was interesting. So, yeah, anyway, my information will be on the screen. You can click my face to subscribe to the channel if you like content like this. Uh, I've got the tab store too you guys can check out. Other than that, um, yeah, we'll throw some other videos up that you guys might be interested in. And we'll see you guys next week with a new video. Have a great one. Thank you.